click the bell icon to turn on notifications. A recent and very welcome addition to the Lookup family of functions in Excel is XLOOKUP. And XLOOKUP is a modern, flexible replacement for older functions like VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP and LOOKUP. Much easier to understand and most definitely shorter to type out, XLOOKUP can find values in vertical or horizontal ranges, can perform exact or approximate matches and supports wildcards for partial matches. XLOOKUP can also search data starting from the first value or the last value. So does this spell the end of VLOOKUP? Well, maybe, but before you get too sad, let's take a look at how easy XLOOKUP is to use. So let's take a look at how simple complex lookups can be using the new XLOOKUP formula. Now in this spreadsheet, I have a list of employee names and I have my data structured in a slightly different way to what I might normally structure it. So I have my employee name in column D. I then have the date that they started in column A, the team they're currently in in column B, and then their location in column C. It's really just to highlight the difference between XLOOKUP and VLOOKUP. If we were going to use VLOOKUP to do something like this, and I wanted to use the name as the lookup value, which I could well possibly do in this particular example, the name would always have to be on the left of the information I want to look up. So I would need to move column D over to the left if I wanted to use the name as my lookup value. Now with XLOOKUP, we don't need to worry about that because much like index match, it can search in every direction in your table of data, which makes it a lot more flexible. Now, another thing I want to highlight in here before we get into constructing our first XLOOKUP is that you can see here, I have the current team that the employee is in. Now, what you'll notice is that I also have a couple of repeat names in column D. So just to make those stand out, I'm just going to highlight this and let's just do some conditional formatting and highlight those duplicate values. So you can see here I have Bonnie and I have her again down here. Now, when Bonnie first started at the company, she was in the development team. But I can see that a couple of years later, Bonnie actually moved to the special projects team. So currently, she's in the special projects team. The same thing here for Kathy Wong. She started in the IT team, and then a couple of years later, she moved across to training and development. So this is an important point to know because with XLOOKUP, we can make the distinction as to which one of these we're actually looking for. So let's just clear that conditional formatting and let's construct our XLOOKUP. So for that, I'm gonna jump across to the list worksheet. Now in here, we have a small table that has the employee names in column A. We have their salary information in column B. We have a job rating for each employee. So maybe this has been gained from some kind of review or assessment. And the rest of our columns are blank. So I have a column for team, a column for current team. I then have a column for bonus and new salary. And then right over on the right hand side, we have a smaller table, which shows me some job ratings and a bonus scheme as well. So I'm going to use all of this information to populate these blank columns and we're going to use XLOOKUP to do it. So let's start out with the team. So I'm going to type in equals XLOOKUP. Open my bracket. Now the first argument here is the lookup value. So your lookup value is always going to be that piece of information that's common between the two tables of data. So I'm going to use the name as my lookup value, comma, I then need to tell Excel where I'm looking this name up. So I want to look the name up in this array. Let's jump up to the formula bar, comma, and then the final argument I need here is just to specify the return array. So I'm looking up the team, so all I need to do is select the team array. Now we do have some other arguments on the end here, but those are enclosed in square brackets, which means that they're optional. Now I am going to use those in further examples, but for this first one, we're just going to leave it there, close our bracket, hit enter, and there we go. Now I want to drag this formula down, so something I forgot to do, which I probably should go back and do, is make these cell references absolute. So let's just click up here and do a quick F4. 
and do the same for these ones as well and hit enter. So now I can drag that down and it's going to pull back the team. Now let's take a look at Bonnie and Kathy. So for Bonnie, it's telling me that her team is the development team. And if I go back to my other worksheet, I can see here that it's picking up the first team that Bonnie was in. So it's not accounting for the fact that she changed teams a couple of years later. And you'll find the same is true for Kathy Wong. It's telling me that her team is IT, but I know that more recently she moved to the training and development team. So in the next example, I'm going to show you how you can essentially extract or look up the most recent team. So let's go back to our table. We now want to see the current team. So we're going to do our X lookup again. Open our bracket. I'm going to use the name as the lookup value again, comma. Where am I looking up that name? Well, I'm looking it up in this range of cells. And let's remember to press F4 this time, comma. And I'm now working up in the formula bar. I now want the return array. So I'm still pulling back the team, which is this array just here and F4 to lock it, comma. Now this is where we move into our optional arguments. So I could specify something for Excel to output if it can't find a value. Now I'm not too concerned about that, so I'm just going to press comma to move on to the next argument. Now here I can specify what kind of match I'm doing. Do I want to do an exact match? An exact match on next smaller item? an exact match or next larger item, or do I want to do a wildcard character match? Now for this example, I'm matching the name and I want it to exactly match, so I'm going to press zero. Incidentally, if you didn't specify anything here, then exact match is the default, comma. Now this final argument is search mode. Now this is where it's gonna pick up the most recent team or the current team that they're in because by default, I do a search from first to last. So it's gonna pick up whatever it finds first in the table. But what if I do a minus one here, where we do a search from last to first? If I now close off my bracket and hit enter, let's copy this formula down, and you can see already for Bonnie, the current team is now showing as special projects, and for Kathy Wong, it's showing as training and development. So because I'm essentially searching from the bottom up, that's why I'm getting the result that I'm getting. So don't forget about that search mode, a really useful little argument. So now let's work out if they're going to get a bonus. And if so, how much bonus are they going to get? Now the bonus is based on their job rating. And you can see we have a little table over here that tells us if somebody gets a job rating of five, they're gonna get a 10% bonus, job rating of four, 8%, so on and so forth and I have a job rating column just here. Now, one thing you'll notice is that for some of these, we don't have what I call exact values. So we have a 4.3 here, a 1.2, a 3.2, so on and so forth. So if I was to do an exact match, it's not gonna match that in this little table. So how are we gonna get around that? Well, let's construct our X lookup. Now my lookup value this time is going to be the job rating comma. Where am I looking up the job rating? Well, I'm looking it up in this array just here, J4 to J8. And I'm going to lock those cells, comma. What's my return array? Well, I want it to return how much bonus they're going to get. So my return array is K4 to K8, F4 to lock, comma. Do I want it to return anything if it can't find the value? Well, no, I'm not particularly worried about that. So I'm just gonna press comma to move on to my next argument. Now it's this argument here, the match mode, where I can specify if I essentially want to round up or round down. So where I have the job rating of 4.3, do I want them to get the bonus for people who have a job rating of four or people who have a job rating of five? Now I'm going to say exact match or next smaller item. So that is going to be a minus one. Close the bracket, hit enter, and let's copy this down and see what we get. So this person has a job rating of five and they are getting a 10% bonus, which is correct. Now this person here, Cody Fletcher, has a job rating of 4.3. He's going to get a bonus of 8% because it's rounded down to four in this table. 
This person here has a job rating of 1.2 and they're not going to get a bonus because we've rounded down to 1 and they get 0%. And let's check this one just here, 3.2. Again, it's been rounded down, so they're going to get a 5% bonus. So now we can do a very basic sum calculation to get their new salary. So we're going to say salary multiplied by bonus. And then we're going to plus the salary again. And I can now double click to copy that down. So XLOOKUP is a great alternative to things like VLOOKUP and INDEX and MATCH. The arguments are a lot clearer, a lot easier to understand. You don't have to do as much typing and you also have more arguments related to how you're matching and the search mode that you're using to make the whole formula a lot more flexible. That's it for now. I will see you next time. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.